So what I'm gonna tell you about today could literally save you thousands of dollars. And though insurance is not a sexy topic to talk about, I think it's one that's super necessary. One of you actually left a comment asking if I could discuss insurance. And at the time, I didn't really feel like it was a topic I'd wanna talk about. But now that I've gone through the whole process of dealing with insurance after our recent robbery, uh, check out our last video if you haven't seen that one. And so let's start with just our story, what happened. So back in February, a couple months ago, our studio was broken into and they ended up taking three cases, two Pelican cases and our camera backpack. And so that amounted to about twenty-three dollars to $25,000 worth of equipment. And then we started the insurance process. There's so many things when it comes to getting an insurance policy that you just get it and you think you understand it, but it isn't until you actually need to use it that you realize the many foibles or flaws with that insurance policy and the ways that you could realistically lose a lot of money. So how can you guys save money and learn from my mistakes? Let's dive into it. Before we go deep into the insurance policy and what you should understand, I do wanna tell you a few little things for those of you who don't have insurance yet on why insurance is important. The first thing is, I didn't think I would get robbed. I never thought it was gonna to happen to me. No one enjoys paying money for insurance, but it can truly, really help your business. And if you don't have it, it can cripple or even shut down your business. So now that you know that insurance is important, let's learn from some of my mistakes from this past robbery. And the first one is all about scheduled equipment or scheduled items. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, on a lot of insurance policies for video or photo creatives, you're gonna have what's called your scheduled items. And these are specific items that you put on a list that shows the different amounts that you paid for that or the replacement cost. And those items have to be very specific. Here's where I made a dumb assumption. Who you calling pinning? I got my policy set up many, many years ago, and I had, I think, $21,500 worth of scheduled equipment on this policy. Now, what I didn't know when I was doing this is I just kind of assumed that that 21,500 was insurance that I had, whether I kept that policy specifically up to date with the exact equipment I had or not. The truth is that's not how it works. You need to have the exact equipment on that schedule. And so for us, we had changed our camera equipment over the years. We made lots of different tweaks and changes that really I didn't feel like I needed to update on there. But when we got into the actual claim, we found out, yeah, all these different cameras that we had replaced weren't covered under that policy. And so that meant we were gonna lose thousands of dollars. Something that I would recommend, and I didn't know this again until after going into this claim, when I was talking to one of the insurance agents at our agency, they said that something you can set up is instead of having every single item being a line item, they gave me a number, so say $500 or even $1,000. Let's say you have $10,000 worth of equipment that is $1,000 or less. They said you can make a special type of schedule policy where you have $10,000 of equipment under $1,000, and then it doesn't have to be line item on the schedule to get it covered. So when you get a new C stand or get some small thing or your mic breaks and you buy a different mic, you don't have to change that. You can actually just keep it under there and then you keep a list of that equipment that you own on your personal records and that could then be covered without having to always go back in every time you buy a little memory card or some small thing that just doesn't feel like it needs to be itemized. So the next thing is a lot of policies will have business personal property as one of the sections. And for us, we had $11,500 on that. Now this was truly a saving grace for us. If we didn't have this one, we would have uh oh. The business personal property is one of those line items on your insurance policy that the more you add to that, the higher cost your policy will be. And what I've been told is scheduled items are typically less expensive than just that 
blanket policy. But that policy is super important because there's gonna be things that you don't remember, things that you need to have covered that just aren't there. So here's one of the ugly, dark truths about insurance. And that is you truly need to advocate for yourself in the whole claims process. I'm sorry, ma'am. I know you're upset. Insurance, their whole business is modeled around making money, like any business. I wouldn't say that they are trying to avoid paying out money or do anything illegal or try to hurt businesses or people. But at the end of the day, the less they pay out, the better their business does. When I first got into the policy, she told me you have $11,500 of coverage. She obviously, maybe she doesn't deal with these kinds of claims as much. Maybe she's dealing with home robberies or something like that, but she didn't even look that far into the policy. It was page 13 of the policy, pretty easy to find. I had to go back and push back before she looked to see what those other things were. And I think that's unfortunately kind of where you have to be with a lot of things in business and in life, is if you're not proactive and continuing to follow up and push on those things, you're often gonna lose money and not have things work out how you need. The second thing is you're gonna have to stay on top of them. I had to keep calling, I would be told, hey, by this date, you will have money and the things will be resolved. Nope. <laughs> Another little note is you need to take copious notes. Every time you get on a call, you should be typing out a Google Doc that says exactly what they told you. But if you're not paying attention and writing notes, again, you're gonna lose thousands of dollars because no one's advocating for you except for yourself. So the last lesson I learned in this robbery is depreciation. As equipment ages, it depreciates in its value. And so again, what I didn't understand in this is they will actually depreciate your equipment based on when you purchased it. And so one of my cameras depreciated 50% of its original value. If you were going to buy, so let's use one of our cameras, the Sony a7S III. Let's say we paid $3,800 with tax for it and we have that depreciated to $3,000. If we buy that exact camera back and send them a receipt to prove that we paid for the exact camera again, they will pay back the difference between that depreciation and what you actually paid. But if you're like us and you're like, all right, this is an opportunity to rebuild our kit in a new way, maybe not get the exact lenses or some of the cameras aren't even sold anymore. So what should we do? Well, that's great because you get to update your kit to newer equipment, but they're not gonna cover that depreciation value. But I think maybe there is a point when it comes to lenses and cameras where you have to decide, even though this camera still works two, three years down the road, it might be more valuable to upgrade to the next camera and sell that camera to get as much value out of that camera while you can, while you can maintain uh, and keep up with the industry standards with your current equipment. So just know that if you're planning to get different equipment, you're probably gonna lose out again on hundreds if not thousands of dollars from that depreciation. So before I close out this video, I wanted to share a couple questions that you should ask your insurance agent, whether you're just getting an insurance policy or whether you already have one. But one of them is if hard drives were stolen. So they didn't touch any of our hard drives and we have backup hard drives, not on our studio site, but at my home. We don't always do an incredible job of backing up our Premiere files or our editing files, animation files to those drives often enough. And so you wanna ask your insurance agent, what happens in that situation? Let's say it's a $10,000 project and the client says, you know what, we've had it. You should have had this backed up. We just want our money back. You may be liable for that money. So does the insurance cover $10,000 for that project? What would they cover? Would they cover to pay for part of it as you have to do new work on it? And more importantly, make sure you're actually backing stuff up. We've been trying to build new procedures to protect us, but it's easy even since then to not follow through with those procedures. So just make sure you stay in on that. And then one other thing you should ask about is 
interruption to business. I didn't ask, and I'm pretty sure my policy would have covered this, but I had all my cameras stolen. I had to postpone shoots. I had to rent camera equipment because I didn't get the money from the insurance quick enough, so I needed to do shoots. If you're gonna start having to stop business for a couple weeks, for a couple months, what is that gonna cost your business? How can you survive? If your business doesn't have any savings, what do you do in that situation? So again, ask your insurance policy and carrier, what happens in that situation? And how can you manage that to make sure that you are not shut down? All right, I know that this video is not the most exciting video, but my goal is to help save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars in the future if you do have an incident happen. Now my prayer is that that never happens for you. I don't want you to experience what we've gone through and watch our video about the robbery to make sure that you understand some of the ways to safeguard yourself from that happening. But just make sure that you're insured. Make sure that you talk to your agent and understand what that insurance actually means and implement some of the things and lessons that we learned to make sure that you don't lose out on thousands of dollars. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.